Greetings, everyone, and welcome to this episode of Life with Tanya L. I am Tanya L., your host, and I hope that everyone is doing well out there in the world and that you are just thriving and being your blissful self. Today's topic is going to be about faulty beliefs. I'm currently writing an actual course. So I'm designing a course and the course is dealing with, um, let's say social conditioning and knowing how to see how it affects you. So it is a coaching course, um, that I am designing and it was really interesting. Some of the topic that came up for me, like as I delve deeper into creating the modules and the lessons. And I really began thinking because I know we're going into um, different seasons. And right now, currently, um, we're in the season of going into the holiday, the end of year holiday season. Well, it has began, so I can't even say we're going into because it's what we call the day after the holiday that's called Thanksgiving here in the United States. And... Even though a lot of us do not participate in that holiday because we know the meaning of it and why it was created, we still take it as a time of reflection. It can be still utilized as a time of reflection. Um, And then especially when we know we're going into the Christmas, you know, or Kwanzaa, there's just different, I call it the season of lights. I really like to call that time the season of lights because that's really what it is. It's about light but we won't get into that right now we're going to get into our beliefs around certain things because right now this time of year is when a lot of people go through certain points of depression and anxiety because they feel that they have to just be around family they have to shop they have to spend money they have to cook they got to do all these things because people have shown you that you're supposed to do that but their things are based off of commercialism But again, we're not going to talk about that. We're going to talk about our faulty beliefs and how they can affect everything that we do. Okay. I have a article that I've written here um, that I want to share with you and just like think about what's being said. And I want you to remember that a lot of things that you're going to go through is going to be based off your own beliefs. So you have to know how to detach yourself from those beliefs and stand in your own truth. That's what it's all about, standing in your own truth. So let me go ahead and read this to you. Self-defeating, mistaken beliefs are the debilitating thoughts you have about yourself or how you view your relationships with others. They can get so carried away that they lead to panic or disorder, anxiety, and depression. Case in point, Your beliefs affect everything you do. In fact, every decision you make starts with a belief of some sort because your beliefs are a collection of everything you know to be true. Yet, sometimes what you believe is actually based on false emotions or memories. What do you do then? Is there hope of changing? And if yes, how can we disrupt our faulty belief system and change it for the better? How faulty belief affects everything you do. What you convince yourself to be true ultimately becomes your beliefs. Good or bad, your subconscious mind has complete trust in how you see the world and how you interpret certain things that happen to you in your life. Then it takes your thoughts and emotions and come up with a skewed view of how the world works. So in effect, you're the one who's holding yourself back from living a fulfilling life brimming with adventures and lots of happy times. Tony Robbins said it best. The one thing that's keeping you from getting what you want is the story you keep telling yourself. What are faulty beliefs? Faulty or limiting beliefs are the opinions and thoughts you believe to be 100% true. They are so ingrained in your mind because you spend each day repeating them to yourself like a mantra. Sometimes you may also blame other people and the universe in general for everything that goes wrong in your life. Why? 
you've convinced yourself that this is your reality through the power of faulty beliefs. However, limiting beliefs are called that for a reason. They stunt your growth as an individual and have a negative impact on the way you go about your personal and professional life. So you feel stuck, incompetent, and that failure follows you around wherever you go. Where do faulty beliefs come from? On average, faulty beliefs are developed during our early childhood years, according to Dr. Bruce Lipton. The first seven years of our lives are extremely critical because our brains do nothing but soak in everything around them. This is how we form the basis of right versus wrong, good versus evil. This is also the time when children who are loved and valued grow up with this inert, inherent belief. Consequently, their relationships with themselves and others stem from that love and self-worth. Sadly, the opposite is also true. Children who are neglected or abused become adults with a deep belief that they are not worthy of love and affection. Another way to look at that is Faulty beliefs are our way of defending ourselves against frustration, anger, sadness, and other negative emotions. As a result, your subconscious brain tries to block further suffering by altering how you view yourself in the world around you. This manifests itself in many ways, and each of them has a negative effect on everything you do in life. Take a look at some of the negative outcomes that are a byproduct of faulty beliefs, such as anxiety, conformerism, imposter syndrome, overthinking, perfectionism, procrastination. How to identify faulty beliefs. Let's be honest. You can't tell yourself you're a winner one day, then wake up the following day believing it wholeheartedly. This is a process that takes time and patience and you have to be willing to put in the work, but it'll be so much worth it in the end. Step one, listen to your thoughts. The first step in identifying faulty beliefs and self-defeating thought patterns is by really paying attention. The next time that little voice in your head tells you that you're better off not doing something or having so-and-so, stop and listen. Step two, challenge faulty beliefs. The second step is to challenge these beliefs head on. When you have a negative thought, hit it back with two positive ones. They don't have to be big or anything fancy. Just think of something that makes you smile and brightens your day. Then slowly, day by day, you notice that the nagging voices in your head are becoming weaker. They no longer drain your mental and emotional strength because they've been replaced by more positive thoughts. Step three, develop healthy beliefs. In order to transform faulty beliefs into something healthier and more productive, you have to know your self-worth. Be proud of who you are and what you've accomplished, imperfections and all. Then arm it with self-love and compassion. Take one step outside of your comfort zone. Think about one thing you try to avoid on purpose, say social interactions. To overcome this fear, you have to commit to engage in a brief, meaningless conversation with one or two people each day. Putting yourself out there can be scary, just as many things in life can be. And remember that it's okay to be a bit awkward at times. Who isn't? But strong, optimistic people know there's more to them than a few minutes of awkwardness. There's more confident and comfortable. They are more confident and comfortable in their own skin that they just shrug it off and keep on moving forward. That's why you have to keep it. Continue to challenge your faulty beliefs so you can finally start seeing yourself in the world in a more accurate light where hope and possibilities are within arm's reach. So there we have it. And I want you all to really reflect on what was stated in um, in that writing and apply it, especially during the season. And as we go into the winter season, we begin to hibernate and spend more time indoors and you know then during those times we think more we become a little bit more um self-reflective like right at the beginning of the year we start making new year's resolutions and even though the holiday we're more focused on other people 
that time of year is like when we're focused on ourselves for January. And then February again, when we get into thinking about somebody else, because then we start thinking about relationships. So during this whole season, for these next couple of months, as we're going inward and we're reflecting, I want you to really think about what beliefs you have that are faulty and how you can change it back. We've been on this subject and topic of negative self-talk. This equates in there as well. So now I've given you steps on how you can battle against those negative beliefs or negative thoughts you might have, but never to have negative actions, how you can get out of them and be more in tune positively, positively towards yourself. Cause that's what it's about. This journey is all about you. Even though we meet other people along the way, they're going to help us in life. Or even if they come in a negative way, they're still helping us. We just don't realize it at the time. But this journey is all about you, your self-discovery, your, your life, your mission. You know, we all come down here by ourselves. We're all born alone. We're all going to leave here alone. You know, it's my don't mean to sound like that, but it is reality. You know, when when we're meeting our maker, we're gonna be there alone. So just take the journey and know that the journey is a process and it is a process that could be hard at times. But the reality is when you overcome the challenges and those things that affect you and learn how to um just conquer them instead of letting them conquer you. It's such a beautiful thing. It really is. So I'm wishing all of y'all the best. And I'm hoping that like you will truly just take the steps to go through the process of becoming a better you. Because that's all it's about. <laughs> I'm becoming a better me. And I'm hoping you're becoming a better you. Because you know what? Like I said a little bit earlier, this life is all about you. Well, we have come to the end of this episode. However, I would like to thank each of our listeners for tuning in. I hope the information shared will be helpful to you. Subscribe to Life with Tanya L. on all podcast platforms and visit my website, tanyal.com for more nuggets. Stay blessed until next time. Peace.